welcome to magic. You and your opponents take the role of planeswalkers, powerful sorcerers who can magically travel between planes of existence. To win, you must defeat your opponent by bringing his life total down from 20 to zero. To do this, you will use a variety of tools, represented in the game as a deck of shuffled cards. All players have their own decks to play with. We call this your library. At the beginning of the game, each player draws seven cards. If you don't like your opening hand, you have the option of redrawing, called a mulligan. To take a closer look at your cards, zoom in. As you can see, magic cards have many symbols and words. We'll explain what they mean as the game continues. For the first quest, you're playing a green deck. Green's specialty is large, powerful creatures. Your opponent is Crimson Mage. To cast spells or summon creatures, you're gonna need some resources. In magic, the main resource, mana, comes from lands. Every turn you may play a land from your hand. Once you have enough lands on the battlefield, you'll have the mana you need to cast spells, including summoning creatures. Play a land now. Since you don't have enough mana to cast any spells yet, we'll pass the turn to Crimson Mage. Crimson Mage will also play lands to build the resources he needs to cast spells. Now, he will cast a spell. Crimson Mage has summoned a creature. Attacking with creatures, like Crazed Goblin, is the major way players defeat their opponents. On every creature card, the bottom corner displays its power and toughness. Power is the amount of damage a creature deals in combat. Toughness is the amount of damage needed to destroy this creature. Every spell has a mana cost. To summon Crazed Goblin, it costs Crimson Mage a single red mana. It's represented by this symbol. He had to use up, or tap, his land to pay to cast this spell. Tapped cards are turned side. Mana costs can be more complex than crazed goblins. Summoning this creature will cost four mana, and two of the mana must be green. When a player gains control of a creature, it can't attack or do anything that requires tapping. This is called summoning sickness. These creatures will have a dizzy look to them, but we can expect the crazed goblin to attack on Crimson Mage's next turn. Now it's our turn. Let's summon Colonian Tusker. To cast this spell, play a second land, and then choose the creature that costs two green mana. This creature's power and toughness are 3-3. Three, three. More than a match for that crazed goblin. Let's pass the turn. Now, Crimson Mage will play a land and then attack us with the crazed goblin. 
The crazed goblin has to attack because its rules say it must. When a creature attacks, it taps and moves forward. Now you have a chance to respond with creatures you want to block with. You happen to have a creature on the battlefield that will block very well. If Crimson Mage's attacking creatures aren't blocked, you will take damage. Your Colonian Tusker can keep you safe. Creatures with summoning sickness can block. Block the crazed goblin! During the combat damage step, each creature deals damage equal to their power. This time, these creatures will deal damage to each other at the same time. Crazed Goblin will die, and the Colonian Tusker will survive. At the end of every turn, each creature heals. Any damage dealt to them is removed. You don't have to keep track of damage from turn to turn. Play another land. Now it's our chance to attack Crimson Mage. Because he doesn't have any creatures to block with, Crimson Mage will take three points of damage. You don't have any spells that you can cast for now, so let's pass the turn. Send your Colonian Tusker into combat. Remember that you can't attack with your rumbling Bayloth yet because it has summoning sickness. It's important to know that in magic, you can only decide that your creatures are attacking an opponent. You don't have control over which of your opponent's creatures will block. Unless the card says otherwise, blocked creatures deal all damage to the creatures that blocked them. No damage is dealt to the defending player. Blocking with small creatures to not take any damage is sometimes a good strategy. we're gonna try something a little different. Instead of playing your land and casting a spell before combat, wait until after combat. Now, attack with both of your creatures. It 
It looks like Crimson Mage has decided not to block with his Bloodrock Cyclops, so he'll take seven damage. Awesome. During the main phase after combat, go ahead and play your land. You'll be in great shape to win if you cast this creature next. Crimson Mage will play a land and attack. Things are looking good. with everything. In quest two, we'll spice up the battle with other kinds of spells. 